Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. Today we are tearing down the RX 5500. This thing came with an HP pre-built. This is a uh, Pavilion gaming PC that had a Ryzen 3 5300G along with this 5500 as its uh, actual GPU included. And with OEM GPUs having a little bit of a uh, sketchy past where sometimes they had okay cooling on the GPU core themselves, but then the VRMs and the memory modules on the GPU weren't necessarily properly cooled cooled. Uh, since there's that sort of sketchy past with OEM uh, GPUs, I thought I would take a look under the hood at this RX 5500 and see if HP is using a good 5500 with adequate cooling on all major components or if the GPU core is the only thing that's really cooled underneath this, uh, this little plastic shroud and uh, aluminum fin array with copper heat pipes though. Now, as I take a look under the hood of the RX 5500, there are basically three major areas I'm checking for when I'm looking at the cooling. First and foremost, the GPU core itself, which is actually really easy to check because you can run a Heaven benchmark run for an extended period of time and fully saturate the cooler and see where it sort of normalizes. That one's easy, and on this card, it seems like it's just fine. But the other two areas are a little bit more difficult to check because there's not necessarily always sensors that'll tell you uh, in hard hardware info or other programs exactly the temperatures that those components are running. The first one is the VRM. The power delivery itself can get sort of warm with some GPUs. Now this is not an overly hot GPU to begin with, so I don't expect, even if it had no VRM cooling at all, at least no active cooling, I don't think that would really be a big deal with a card like this, though higher end GPUs that would be a bigger deal. But then the other area is the actual memory modules on the PCB itself. Often with these OEM cards you'll see absolutely absolutely no care given to the cooling of the memory on board. And I'm hoping to find some thermal pads actually connecting the memory modules to the GPU cooler itself. So with all that said, let's hop over into a Heaven Benchmark sort of clip here, just so you can kind of see where the GPU core itself is running at. And as you'll see in the actual footage here, before we tear down the card, the GPU core itself is absolutely fine running in the mid 60s. But let's go ahead and look under the hood of the RX 5500 and find out just what this cooler is looking like once you actually have it apart and looking at the card. So this is the RX 5500. Before I tear it down, I do want to go over um, a little bit of a physical overview. Obviously, we have a pretty short card here with uh, the PCB and the cooler being the exact same length. It is a standard double width card. This is a plastic shroud with a single fan in the middle. It does look like air will escape a little bit out the back of the card, not very much on the bottom side there by the slot, not very much on the top side, and then out the front would be the other place the air is gonna be escaping from this cooler. Over here on the outputs, we have two DisplayPort as well as one HDMI output on this particular card. And outside of this little splash of red, this is a pretty neutral color schemed card, so it should fit in pretty much any build aesthetically speaking, or at least for the most part, unless you have a huge aversion to just the little splash of red for the Radeon logo there. Now on the backside, we do have this single eight pin PCIe power connector that you'll need to power this card. So flipping it over here on the backside, I think it's gonna be pretty simple to actually get into this card. It looks like we obviously definitely have to pull off uh, these four screws around the GPU core itself, but then it looks like maybe just these other two and we might have the cooler off of this card. Hopefully it's that simple, so I'll go ahead and get that done. Now it is interesting, there is no like warranty void sticker, at least that I'm seeing on this card right now. So uh, HP, which is where this card is specifically from, this OEM card, though it may be included in other brands pre-built as well, I'm not really sure, but this particular card, uh, you could probably tear it down and HP would be none the wiser. Though of course, technically you are allowed to you know, tear down your products in the United States anyways. It's not supposed to be able to void your warranty, but at the same time, you know, do you have the ability to fight that in court? Because HP does. Okay. Give me this a little wiggle here. See if I can free that. There we 
go. I think thermal pads were holding us back. Now, what I'm really interested to see here is how the thermal pads are on this uh, particular card because what you probably already know about some of these OEM cards is uh, while the coolers are usually pretty decent for the actual GPU core itself, often the memory modules or the, uh, the VRMs are not really cooled in any sort of active way. Uh, I know some of the NVIDIA cards that were OEM uh, specifically had an issue where the RAM modules had nothing cooling them at all, at least actively, like they weren't connected to anything with heat pads or rather thermal pads. So let's go ahead and remove this. Let's see what we're working with. So this is actually excellent to see. Um, the power delivery is actively cooled. It's connected with thermal pads. It looks like as pretty good uh, contact there just based on the indent on the thermal pad itself. Nice big thermal pad there. And then each of these four uh, memory modules is also directly contacted with a thermal pad which hooks directly into the cold plate here which uh, looks like there are two copper heat pipes on this cooler um, connecting all of this heat pulling it out into the fin array. Now over here there are some fins. Let me see if I can get you a shot of this. So what I was trying to say was uh, below the VRM cooling, we just have a fin stack. So there's not great surface area uh, below the thermal pad that is actually helping cool off the VRMs. But this is much better, obviously, than no thermal pad and no contact whatsoever. Just understand that this isn't providing a huge amount of cooling potential for um, for the VRMs, but it is definitely something though I was more concerned about the memory models to be honest because this is not a high power card and uh, You probably saw me a little bit struggling with this uh, fan connector. This thing was in there So if you are taking apart a card like this Make sure you're really careful with this because there are a number of things that can go wrong as you try to get a fan connector like this out of the card itself, whether it's you pull wires out of the housing or whether you actually break off the header itself, which I uh, have done with LED connectors, fortunately not mission critical, but uh, be careful when you are disconnecting something like that. So this is the basic teardown though here. We have good cooling on the VRM, or at least adequate. We have good cooling on the memory modules, which is great to see in an OEM card. And we have this uh, copper cold plate here, not even nickel plate or anything, just copper, um, connecting us to that GPU. So let's get that cleaned up. So there is absolutely nothing that is printed or anything on the die itself, which is a little bit different than NVIDIA cards. Uh, so now that I've cleaned that up, all I really want to do here is reapply some Arctic MX4 and see if our temperatures now are any better, worse, or roughly the same with new thermal paste on this GPU than it was before we replaced the thermal paste, not that those temperatures were bad whatsoever. So the last thing to do after replacing the thermal paste with the MX4 is to take a look at another Heaven benchmark run and there's basically no change whatsoever. So the thermal paste applied at least in the short term is just fine though as with anything that uses thermal paste after a couple of years you'll probably want to replace that because over time you'll likely see the thermal paste dry out a little bit and those temperatures will start to creep up if you're running this card in a system over the long run though fortunately with something like this it's actually very simple to pull the card apart and replace that thermal paste. So I guess this is where we reach back out to those of you that have made it this far in the video. If you have an OEM card, whether it's the RX 5500 or some other OEM card from the past, let me know what your experience with the GPU cooler was. Uh, did it do a good job cooling the GPU? Was the GPU a jet engine? Especially I know some of those Alienware uh, higher end OEM cars that would come with those had those blower style coolers and didn't really do a great job job. Uh, do you know if your cooler was actually cooling the VRMs actively or the memory modules actively? Just let me know all your thoughts on OEM card cooling in those comments down below. Otherwise, if you like the video, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.